女士们、先生们，大家好！我很抱歉，今天很想去北京，亲自参加这次会议，但是因为突然发生的身体问题，我没办法坐飞机。I am thankful still to be able to join you by video today, and I wanted to share some of my work on big data. Big data is becoming a dominant paradigm of making sense of the world around us. It promises novel insights and knowledge at scale. But the power dynamics of big data privilege those with the consolidated information and with the tools to analyze and interpret at scale. This power has the potential to go unchecked and unquestioned because of its reliance on the authority and objectivity associated with data, and because of the black box processes that obscure big data practices. Of course, we came together today to discuss the potential power of big data because we are interested in what it might tell us about humanity. To be sure, there is great potential, but there is also something about operating at this scale that makes us susceptible to forgetting the individuals that collectively make up big data sets. We risk missing the trees for the forest. We have to remember that big data is always made up of individuals. It might be our per personal purchasing habits, our interest profiles, our friends list, the collection of our published thoughts, or perhaps all of the above. On a macro scale, each of those data points allow researchers and firms to categorize populations and segment markets, but it takes work at the micro scale to grasp a contextual view of the individual. Research efforts and funding support must keep this in mind. Big data methods can answer some questions, but certainly not all. My work has focused on the lived experience of data, using qualitative interview methods to understand approaches to thinking about data. I look at data as a personal medium for knowledge creation, interpretation, and meaning making. I have closely studied the quantified self, a community which Individuals use mobile applications and wearable sensors to create data about our bodies and behaviors, and to learn something from that data. The technology companies building these tools have interests in the aggregate insights, but there is much to be learned from individuals about what our data means to us at a very personal scale. So, what do we need to do to avoid the potential biases? And dehumanizing effects of looking at individuals through a big data lens. As those of us here who are developing and supporting big data methods, we need to actively seek out means of preserving the subjectivity of the humans to which this data refers. I argue that researchers, designers of internet platforms, and those in the business of data need to keep the humanity of data in mind. Remember always to look at the small scale alongside large scale interpretations. This approach is sure to keep us in touch with what big data means across all scales of humanity, from the globe to national populations to the user base of large internet platforms to local communities, right down to the individual. I do realize that Western thinking tends to privilege the position of the individual above the collective. And in turn, Eastern traditions tend to privilege the collective over the individual. But we all share a common interest in humanizing our policies and interventions based on big data insights. In China, this is embodied as yi ren wei ben, as a principle of human-centered policy. I argue that we need big data with human characteristics. Figuring out what that means across cultures will be hard work. But uncovering and engaging with the commonalities and differences in the way we think about humans in big data will be revealing. This is an important step in what is sure to be a fruitful collaboration as we work together to grapple with what big data means to us all. 我的演讲已完毕，谢谢大家。